Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you are listening to us. This is a dissemination capsule, as we call them, about public participation in the framework of the agreement between the City Council of Madrid, UNED, and the participatory group. Today with us is Don Antonio Azuela de la Cueva, a very special guest. Thank you for inviting me, Martin. Very happy to be here. So he's a professor at the Social Research Center at UNAM, the National Autonomous University of Mexico. Apart from being a good friend of mine, he's a very special person because of his approach towards urban problems, which is very interesting, both from an intellectual and a practical point of view. He has always tackled law, not not only in its conceptual purity, but approximating legal sociology, especially in a framework, in a context such as that of public participation, it is truly enriching. So we want to talk about different topics today, topics shared by Latin America and Spain in this Ibero-American community, where the participatory group really tries to strengthen and enhance the exchange of practices, ideas and legislation. So one of my favorite topics You'll tell us if it's also your favorite one or not, but one that you tackle really well, Antonio Azuela, is cities as a scenario for conflict. Tell us a little bit behind this thought, which is mythified, I'd say, but how can we approach cities as a conflict and what is the role of participation within it? Thank you very much, Marta. I believe that in our profession there's a sort of anxiety towards conflict, a sort of a desperation that projects are not flowing properly. And I believe that we should understand the general context first. And it could be compared to a paradox. Generally, in our region, cities have opened up channels for participation, but that hasn't stopped conflicts from arising. So there's a sort of desperation. We've spent uh, decades creating consultation processes, neighborhood fora, and a huge legislation framework that entails a lot of budgetary costs. Our authorities need to wait to see what people think, and we expect democracy to make projects flow, but sometimes it's quite the opposite. Not, it's not that these new channels are leading to conflict, but they are not enough to stop them. So, for starters, I think we need to be aware that we have to be a bit more calm to understand the logic of conflict and to be patient, patient to recognize that uh, these participation levels are yet to mature and we need to get to know them better. I love how you talk about this from that calmness and quietness. I believe that in the participatory group we have always, and you, this you can check in our website, we have always analyzed different cases. For instance, Juan Felipe Pinilla, you know him well, told us about the Los Andes University and I think it's fundamental and this is fundamental too for the students in our master's program to get to know what in participatory terminology is called a stakeholders map. So we sometimes entrench ourselves in norms and procedures and standards without really understanding the deep conflict in existence and then trying to identify the best channel for participation. For instance, in a very local level conflict, you might do okay with a round table, but in a larger conflict, maybe you would need a referendum or a larger consultation. So, from Spain, we have a lot to learn about these deadlines, these paces, these speeds. We are always in a hurry to formalize procedures. And later, 
results, outcomes are often unpredictable. Out of all of these instruments, now, which ones are working best for you? Or do you need a legal corpus to make, to turn participation into procedures? What is your perception? It's very hard to generalize, but something that catches my attention a lot is the connection between these participation mechanisms and the political representation system. So we always take for granted that people who have been elected have the authority because of, fa of the fact that they were elected. And then there's another administration that deals with people. And these two systems collide sometimes. What we need as professionals is to recognize the political dimension of what we do. We don't like to think this way. We like to think that we have a very pure scientist and the politicians go their own way and they do strange things that make us uncomfortable. No, we are part of the same system, part of the same process. So we need to be aware of this continuity or this rupture between local participation channels and general high-level political representations. That's a uh, that's our starting point because the world is extremely complex. I love this comment because we had Fernando Pindado as a guest in one of our programs and he was talking precisely about this issue. His first belief about participation that uh, convulsed and shocked the audience was that participation is politics. It's about making political decisions. So we need to demystify the idea of participation as a transform complete transformation of our democratic model, as though through participation we were able to transform representative democracy into direct democracy. You studied these movements in the 60s and 70s. This was an ideal uh, utop a utopia, a belief back in the day, and it's not the case. We need to understand that we need to take a step back and know our limits really well and know the extent or the scale of participation and its limitations. It's very interesting the way we can the ways we can approach this. I was thinking about what you mentioned your stakeholders map. We have many tools to analyze the stakeholders map and it's a little bit complicated because it seems as though we were carrying out a, pol a police investigation, but stakeholders maps move and change throughout the process new stakeholders come up others disappear others change their mind and we need to understand this fluid dynamic and the fact that the the people who participate have different interests and they are not liars it's just the way the world is we need to be ready for the flow for the richness of the process and this has to do a lot with the speed of the process of the decision yes exactly you're just right in one of your reflections about stakeholders map and I would like to link this to what's happening in Spain in Spain and I'm here I'm jumping towards urban planning we are living a crisis a crisis of urban planning of decisions made in cities because of the disruption of judicialization of conflict so when in the natural scenario, so to speak, conflicts are not solved, they need to be solved through the legal means. Now, what happens then? What about this new, not new, but traditional stakeholder, the other power, the legal power? What's your perception of the judicialization or legalization of processes? I'd say it's an additional element of complexity and it's a black box that we need to know how to open. Our problem with our training as uh, jurists is that we try to impose our point of view, our legal point of view, what we expect these powers to do. 
we become the judge's judge, and that way we can't understand anything. Let's get rid of our legal opinion, our legal perspective, which is extremely complicated, to really understand what's happening there. Because judges are really enthusiastic when they get to these topics. They feel that they are saviors and they talk about rights. They think this is going to be their big ruling, their big sentence about animals' rights or environmental rights. And they simplify things and this is terrible. Let's convey the complexity to the judge's world, the complexity involved in the process. There's a new book, La Otra Ventanilla, The Other Window, which was published in Buenos Aires. This is a balance written by Pilar Arciniaco and Gustavo Gamayo. Hopefully you'll have it here soon. It's about judicialization of Argentinian conflicts. And look at the case of the Supreme Court ruling about a river. It was going to be the, the, the ruling of a, a lifetime. And at the end, the judge who was assigned to monitor the case became an, a local authority. He loved it. It was kind of like a, a toy, a game. He was organizing the territory and he loved it as a local authority. This was extremely surprising and there was no setback instead of having our local governments making decisions, it was the judge doing it for them. We need to understand what happened there. That is our main task. In this huge scenario of participation and conflicts where we see that we often try through participation to solve uh, problems that haven't yet been solved by standards or legislation. And this is a final reflection we can make together. So what is the weight of standards and legislation or what is our influence between Spain and Latin America in a in this composition, what are the applicable standards? We were having a coffee before and Antonio Azuela was telling me that he did his first PhD master's, uh, I'm not going to get into the years, but it was the last century, in a system where he wasn't used to anything. So currently, I'd say there's an influence of systems and models and that overlap and it makes it extremely difficult to understand the standards applicable or the standards that shouldn't be implemented. We want to incorporate a lot of innovations in our systems and they just don't fit or they are even disruptive. As you were saying before about rights, fundamental rights, etc. Now, what could our call be? I don't like to finish with a recipe or with short sentences, but could you please share a final conclusion? What I see in Spain, and I don't know how you perceive Latin America in this case, but there's an excess of simplification when there's an extremely complex reality and how we can strike a balance between complexity and oversimplification. As you were saying, it's extremely complex to finish by giving, by sharing a recipe to solve all our problems. But for those of us um, between law and practice in urban planning, in the world of urban planning, we need to pay attention because sometimes standards make the world more complex instead of more straightforward. And this happens, but we are so married, so to speak, with these standards because standards are the result of democratic processes that try to be efficient and participatory. We are fascinated by standards and sometimes we are unable to see that the standards themselves are complicating things for us. Let me finish with the problem of scale. Law works with the dif with different jurisdictions, municipalities, cities, towns, regions, countries. In reality, scales are different. What is a solution at local level, for instance, having access to water through our, our taps, is a problem that 
results from a global hazard. We're talking about different conflicts, but it's the same water. So, how can we legitimi legitimize our decisions? The new City of Mexico Constitution says that consultations will be mandatory if there is a participation of 15% of the constituents in one corresponding area. Corresponding area, what is that? The area, the city, the municipality, the region. The opinion of 20 million inhabitants of the whole metropolitan area will be very different from the opinions of the neighborhood that will be directly impacted by including that infrastructure. So adjust, adjusting our jurisdictions, the natural scales of, of law, to the real scales of territories. It's very difficult, and I'm sorry to conclude with something so controversial. No, quite the opposite. I'd say it's a perfect, maybe that's too much, but an amazing way to finish because we are living this at a global level. There are processes, procedures, and plans, but often they simply don't fit or cannot be adjusted, adapted. When I teach administrative law, these are not adjusted to the physical reality that we live. So that's when a process or a procedure that was perfectly established and defined becomes disruptive and it breaks down. So I think this is the perfect final touch to conclude this capsule. After this brief interview with Antonio Azuela, we would like to spend uh, so much longer with him, but uh, that way you'll be looking forward to the next video capsule on public participation.